Automating your audio or video to your sequence is one of the many great tools at your disposal when you begin an edit in Adobe Premiere. Edit to the beat, easily create time lapses or slideshows, or fix audio pops all in one easy action. Here's how to automate to sequences in Adobe Premiere Pro. Keeping your project organized up front is the best way to streamline the automation process. Start by creating a custom bin for all the footage or audio clips that you want to be automated to the sequence. Once you have all of your files in this bin, you should put them in the order you want them to appear in the timeline. In List View, you can sort files by any of the metadata categories to put the clips in your preferred order. In Thumbnail View, you can drag and position all the clips in whichever order you like. Next, set the in and out point for every clip so that your preferred section will be sent to the timeline. This can be as specific or as general as you want, but when you're editing on the beat, they need to be at least long enough to fill the gaps between the markers. Now that you're organized, it's time to automate them to the sequence. The great thing about using automation is that you can get lots of B-roll onto your timeline quickly at the exact spot you want it all at once. When adding footage that cuts right on the beat, you need to create a new sequence, drag your music track onto the timeline, click anywhere outside the track to deselect it, set your playhead at the first frame of the song, and make a marker with the M key. It should appear above the playhead. Then, play back your song, and in real time, hit the M key everywhere you want a new clip to start, which should be on the beat. For covering up cuts in an interview, it should work the same way. Make sure everything is deselected and play the interview back. Wherever you'd like a new clip to start, hit the M key. Once your markers are all set, make sure that you lock any layers to avoid accidentally editing over them. Next, click on your sorted or arranged bin from earlier, or select the clips in the specific order you'd like them to appear by using Control or Command and clicking. Then, click the Automate to Sequence button or go to Clip Automate to Sequence in the toolbar. A dialog window will pop up with your options. Select your preferred ordering based on how you organized and selected your clips. Select at unnumbered markers for your placement since you're using the markers you made. Choosing sequentially is typically for when there are no markers. Choose overwrite edits in these applications because using insert edits will push everything else further down the timeline. You want your files to go directly on top of your music or your interview. Turn off your clip overlap, which are handles that you'll only need if you're using transitions, and if you're using stills, set the duration that uses either your in and out point or a specific number of frames. Transitions only work when clip overlap is selected, and they use the default transition length that you can change in your preferences. Ignore either audio or video if your clips don't need one or the other. Hit OK and your clip should be sent to the timeline, lined up with the markers automatically. To create a time lapse by automating to a sequence, create or open an empty sequence, go to your time lapse photo bin and arrange or sort the stills in the correct order using List View, then select all of the photos or the bin, and then click the Automate to Sequence button. Use the sort order, set them sequentially, use insert edits for empty timelines and overwrites if there's music, turn the clip overlap to zero, set the still image duration to one frame per still, turn off the transitions, and click OK. Your time lapse should be automatically sent to the timeline. To cut out or minimize audio pops with dialog or multiple sound bites being cut together, you first need to set the default audio transition duration by hitting Command or Control comma or going to Premiere Preferences Timeline and changing it to two or four frames. Then arrange and organize your audio clips with set in and out points and select Automate to Sequence. Set all of the options on how you want the audio clips to be brought in, then set the clip overlap to the same as your default audio transition length. Check the box to apply the default audio transition. Now they'll be brought in with transitions that remove any pops. The big caveat to this is that if your clips are all coming from one soundbite or interview, you have to make a subclip for each piece you want in the timeline. To do this, open the audio file in the source monitor, make an in and out point around the soundbite you want to use, then right click and select make subclip. Make sure restrict time to subclip boundaries is selected, then hit OK. Organize these pieces in the project or bin, then automate them to the sequence like before, and they should appear in the timeline in order with short transitions on each one to get rid of any pops. And don't forget to download the free Pond5 add-on for Adobe Premiere Pro to preview millions of video clips, music tracks, and sound effects directly in your projects. 
add effects, transitions, trim and place them in order, and then instantly replace the edited preview files with high resolution versions with the click of a button when you're done. So what do you think? What are some of your favorite shortcuts when using Adobe Premiere? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, you can learn more time-saving tips by clicking up here and by subscribing to our YouTube channel for more tutorials. You can also read the Pond5 blog for an in-depth companion piece, as well as other filmmaking tips and tricks. And as always, head over to Pond5.com to get millions of video clips and other assets to use in your next project.